with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and verse 10. The book of Proverbs, book of Proverbs, Proverbs, chapter 31, and verse 10. 31, 10. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profit she plants a, a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. And a lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. A virtuous wife. Difficult to find and precious. You find her very difficultly. But if you do find her, she is more precious than many rubies. The characteristics of this woman are the characteristics of the bride, the church, in which the Lord will come in rapture, glorious, holy, without spot, speck, or wrinkle. A church which will be truly the glory of her husband. So through the characteristics of the virtuous wife, as the word of God reveals it to us, we now will see the church, the body of Jesus, and ourselves, how God wants us to be, so we can be in that day truly ready, so we can take part in the rapture of the church. A woman, therefore, that's virtuous, a wife that's virtuous, that gives to her husband boldness. I repeat, she gives to her husband boldness, so he can stand in his surroundings, the world, in heaven and among the people, the holy people of God. The heart of this man has courage in her, trust. And it's very, very important, my brethren, for Christ to have confidence, courage, to boast for his church, his bride. So, the boasting of Christ will bring abundance 
to all the spiritual realms and the materialistic realms. A virtuous wife, holy church of God. It is the same, it is the glory of a husband. She will always bring good and not evil all the days of her life to her husband. Her offering will be good. It will not be whining, complaints, it won't be foolishness, it won't be vanities. What the church brings to God in the name of Jesus Christ, but it will be always what's good, always what's right, always what's appropriate according to the will of God. These are the characteristics which characterize the church of Christ and the virtuous woman, wife. And let me repeat these things again because we'll go further on more quickly. She is what her husband boasts about and her offering is good to her husband. Let me say it in a better way. The church of Christ, the one, the dove, the blameless one, not the 600 queens and the 70 concubines, nor the innumerable virgins, but one, one blameless one, the dove of the Lord. It is she who Christ boasts about. And Christ responds with abundance of blessings. And the church offers good to God. In other words, according to His will. In other words, uh, uh, the characteristic of a virtuous wife and the church of Christ is a heart that's upright. So, she will do all the will of the Lord. And how is this expressed and displayed? This one holy church, how is it expressed? How is a virtuous wife expressed? Firstly, she is a worker. In other words, she asks for wool and flax. She doesn't ask for things to be adorned with. She doesn't ask for vanities, but she asks for wool and flax so she can work willingly and not whining, not in complaining, but she does it willingly with pleasure, glorifying, seeing the Lord's name and not giving a command for other people to work and for her just to see, but with her own hands she works. That's the Church of Christ. She works. She's not lazy, but she works with her own hands and for what she needs to live for and for every blessing, spiritual blessings that's in heaven. That's why she asks, the suitable tools, the suitable goods, wool and flax. She is always full of food, heavenly and earthly food. She, does la she doesn't lack anything because the Lord is her shepherd. That's why she lacks nothing. She is like the merchant ships, not the ships of fishermen that sometimes go, come back empty, but merchant ships that are always full of goods, and she brings her food from afar. From heaven she brings her food. From heaven she brings the grace of God, the glory of God. From far away she strives, she labors, she makes sure that her household is full of goods, full of the presence of God. Her household is full of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, her household full of faith, love, hope, her household is full of Christ. And that's why she wakes up very early. She doesn't sleep during day and wakes up at night, but she works all day and she wakes up early in the morning so she can give food to her household and work to her maidservants. My beloved brethren, it is a miracle, the Church of Christ. As it is a big miracle, the virtuous wife next to her husband. I repeat, it is a miracle, the Church of Christ, before Jesus, the glory of Jesus. As it is a great miracle for the virtuous wife, it's not a human conquer, nor is it a human 
establishment, but it is the grace of Christ, the Church of Christ. It is something which people did not create, the Church of Christ. The virtuous wife is a person who was not created by human hands, power or might, but it is the grace and the expression of love of God towards man. Because the Church of Christ is a house of the living God. It is the pillar and the establishment. It is where truth, and the truth is the word of the Father, where truth, the word of God, is established and exists and is glorified. She is diligent and she's content. She doesn't wait for other people to help her. She considers a field. She sees it. She observes it. The church sees work. She considers a field, looks at it well and buys it. Why? Because she has God's favour. She has God's favour in her life. God favours her. Whatever she does, God blesses it. She doesn't look at it as people say and leaves and says, I wish I had it, but she sees it and buys it because God gives her the abilities. And from the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. And she does not get this vineyard so she can just have it, but so it can produce, to bring fruit. And this vineyard she plants with her own means. From the fruit of her hands, she has lots of fruit. She has good fruit. And from the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. God uses her. She gives her fruit so she can create a vineyard. I am the vineyard, Christ says. You are the branches. And the church of Christ creates vineyards with the fruit of her own hands and the fruit is given by the Lord because the Lord is pleased with her. She then girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She is strong. She is strong. She is empowered with the grace of Christ through the Holy Spirit because she is humble. She doesn't boast. She doesn't see into herself. But she knows that everything is Christ for her. She doesn't boast and she doesn't see in people because she knows that everything is Christ. Christ is everything for her. She doesn't wait, she doesn't hope from people to help her. She doesn't wait for people's power and might to help her because inside of her the mighty one dwells and she's strong in the Holy Spirit. The main characteristic of hers is humility. So she can always find grace by God. She feels that her merchandise is good. She perceives this. She knows. She has witness of the Holy Spirit. She doesn't walk in her fantasies. But she has information from the Holy Spirit. Because Christ is for her. Her Lord. But also her God. God is for her everything her master, her Lord, and the witness of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. The witness of Jesus Christ makes her feel that her merchandise, her work is good. She walks well. She's walking with stable footsteps. She's not affected by the storms. She's not affected by the problems. She's not influenced at all. She knows that her merchandise is good. That's why her lamp does not go out by night. But the fire of the Holy Spirit burns night and day inside of her. The flame of salvation is always burning night and day. And with the light of day, and the dark of night, her light of salvation is burning, is shining. She doesn't lose her hope. She doesn't say, God's forgotten me. She doesn't say, my husband doesn't love me. The Lord doesn't love me. She doesn't complain. She doesn't whine. She doesn't 
act miserable and mumble, but she always knows that the Lord Jesus Christ is her Lord, is her God. That's why her lamp never goes out. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds a spindle. She knows she has the skills to work the distaff and the spindle. She knows how to weave and how to make garments and coverings of salvation. She knows how to protect and how to cover her husband and her children. She knows. She knows beforehand. She is content. She is satisfied. She does everything with her own hands because he who dwells in her has given her everything to do. She, yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy and extends her hands to the poor. She doesn't only take care of herself and her family, but because the love of God is poured out in her heart, she is full of mercy. She is good. She is full of love. And love isn't only in words, but love is in works. It's not only in fantasies, but also in the hands of offering. It's not in thoughts, but it is in the fight of offering. She doesn't fear about the snow for her household, because all her household is clothed, clothed with scarlet, double clothing. She doesn't fear trials, cold. She doesn't fear what other people fear, the threat of death. Because her children and all her household are dressed double and with the Word of God and with the Holy Spirit and with love and with truth and with work and with faith or more rightly so and with faith and with her works and with her sacrifice and her patience and with her offering and with her care. She is full as far as her walk is and complete as far as her work is, her walk is before Christ. The church of Christ, which Christ will rapture, the virtuous wife at the side of her husband, which is his glory also. She makes also um, coverings for herself, but her garment is fine linen and purple. It's honor and glory. Holiness, sanctification and glory. Fine linen and purple. These are her clothes. Holiness and majesty. Glory of God. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She introduces her husband. She does not introduce herself. If the virtuous wife introduces someone, it's her own husband. If the Church of Christ introduces someone, it is the husband of the Church, Christ and only Jesus. And he is seen, Christ, glorious among the gates, in the heavenly gates of the kingdom, in the gates which are open. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. She is a good economist and a very, very skillful wife who takes care of things with specific guidelines and gentleness. She doesn't say, I walk off and whatever happens, happens. But she takes care of things with gentleness, with specific specifications. She is like a surgeon. She takes care of details, the, the gentleness of souls and spirits. She strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She has power of faith for the future and power of the Holy Spirit for her present. 
She doesn't lack power. Nor does she lack beauty. She has power. She has beauty. She has the grace of Christ. And she has the glory of Christ, which is upon her and covers her. But she also has faith of God. So she can rejoice for what is to come. She's not afraid. She doesn't labor in worrying because she believes. She does not hesitate or is she afraid or a coward because she believes in Christ. She knows that the future, no matter what will be revealed, the future for her is life, eternal life. It is life in abundance that a house in the glory of God is waiting for her, in which Christ is preparing for her. She is happy for the future, for what is to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and on her tongue is a law of kindness. She is wise, and she is gentle. Nice characteristics of the Church of Christ. Nice characteristics has this virtuous wife as Christ presents her to us as an image, as an image of his church. As Christ is the image of God, the virtuous wife is the image of the church. She is difficult to find, but even more precious, more worth than all the rubies of the world. She is wisdom. From her, heavenly wisdom comes from, not earthly wisdom, which is demonic and sensual. And she hasn't got bitterness inside of her anger. She hasn't got inside of her divisions. She hasn't got inside of her strife. But inside of her, she has the goodness of God. She has the presence of God. And that's why she is dressed with power and beauty. But at the same time, with favor. She obtains the favor of God and her household enjoys the favor of the church. A nice thing, my beloved brethren, for the church to be gentle as a virtuous wife is. To know how to forget, to know how to forgive, to know how to overpass things, to know how to humble herself. To know how to ask for forgiveness. To know how to accept forgiveness. And to forgive a nice thing. This church which has gentleness, which hasn't got the law, hasn't got anger, hasn't got voices crying out, but has only gentleness and the love of God. Because He who dwells inside of her is the same God. And God is good. And He has flooded the body of Christ, Christ with His love. And as He has flooded God with love, with His love, the virtuous wife. Where can we find her? She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She has good management and governorship of her household because the governor is not the virtuous wife, but Christ dwells in her. Church hasn't got governors because the head of the church is Jesus. The church has only members, members of the body of Jesus. Nobody is governed by the eye only. Nobody is governed by the hand or the foot. No body is governed by the hand or the kidneys. The member preserves the health of the body, but the governorship of the body and the virtuous wife has the Father with His love, Christ with His grace and His authority, and the Holy Spirit with the power of faith, with the power and the characteristics, the gifts in which this helper gives to His church. Her children rise up and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. These are nice two characteristics. The children of the church call her blessed and thank God. 
blessed we are for this church in which Christ has added us in. As the children of the virtuous wife say, we are blessed because we have such a mother. A nice thing. And they want to be like her mother, their mother. They're happy with their mother. But there's also the praises of her husband. He always praises her. He, Christ always praises her. Well done. Well done. Wife. And he praises her and he boasts in her. Many daughters have done well. But you, you one, excel them all. All of them. Many other churches who seem worthy of the call of the Lord. Even the gospel. But there is this one who is the dove born by her mother. This special, different daughter, the Church of Philadelphia, the Church of the Rapture, the Church of the Glory of Jesus. The Church, one word, my brethren, of love. This is the Church that excels them all, the Church of love, the virtuous wife, which is flooded by the love of God. Many seem worthy, but one is a church of love. May God make all our sisters such virtuous wives, and our church truly a church of love. A church which reigns, not only by, with faith, not only with hope, not the gifts, but above all, for love, for the love of God the Father to govern the church, the church of love. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised now and forever and ever. My brethren, the characteristics of the glory and the praise of God isn't beauty or even grace. I'll repeat this. It's not. The characteristic sign of the praises of God, of Christ, if we are humble, in which we should be, to have the grace of Christ, if we have faith, in which with our works becomes beautiful, for there to be beauty, but the characteristic which God is glorified with, and God and Christ praise the church and the virtuous wife, is that she fears the Lord. She has a fear of God. She respects her husband. She respects Jesus. She cares about His will. She cares about her, His character. She cares about His form. She wants to be like Him. She doesn't want there to be any difference between the church and Christ. Between the virtuous wife and the church of Christ. She respects God. She fears God. She loves God. So two other main characteristics and today make up the message of the gospel. One is a church which excels. The one that shows in the most excellent way and that is a church of love. And one is the characteristic which provokes the praises of the Almighty God, the fear of the Lord. And thirdly, the results. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Give her fruit in her hands. Give her fruit, lots of fruit. Many children, a big presence of God. And her works will praise her in the gates of heaven. 
because Christ will come to reward her with her wage according to her work. So three other messages, my brethren. Three other messages to, today. Church of love. Church with the fear of God. Church that brings forth fruit with a great reward in the end. These three messages are the three petitions of ours today. Three petitions. Lord, make us all a church of love. Fill our hearts, Lord, with the fear of God, the true fear of God, which provokes Christ's praises and glorify your name with lots of fruit and with a great reward. Amen.